and this is a joint work with Leo Peran and Alex Birikov. Uh, first, I will uh, give a brief introduction to the problem. Uh, then I will show how we managed to decompose the APN permutation. Then I will show an attempt uh, to generalize the structure. And then I will show some interesting properties uh, obtained using the decomposition. And then I will conclude the talk. So uh, this talk is about S-boxes, uh, small permutations, uh, small functions. Uh, not necessarily permutations. Uh, and when designing a semantic primitive, uh, we often use S-boxes to provide nonlinearity. And in particular, in order to prevent uh, differential attacks, we study uh, the differential properties of S-boxes. And so uh, recall the definition of a difference distribution table of an S-box. It's a table which uh, for each input difference A and uh, output difference B, uh, says how many inputs uh, satisfy this differential transition, or so this uh, equation. And we want uh, these uh, values, uh, for all values for all differences A and B to be as low as possible to prevent differential attacks. Uh, all the values are even in this table, and they can, can't all be zero. So the best possible uh, values is when there are only zeros and twos. And when this happens, we call the function uh, almost perfect nonlinear, or APN. And uh, we know many uh, APNs, APN functions for all dimensions, but we are also very interested in APN permutations, so bijective functions. We know. Uh, many APN permutations in odd dimensions, but for even dimensions, uh, it was a very long open problem until in 2009, Dylan and others uh, have found actually an example of six-bit APN permutation. And since then, uh, no new APN permutations in even dimensions were found. So they found it using uh, some code theory and uh, algorithmic search. And as a result, we have this S-box just as a lookup table. And this gives a few, few insights where we need to search further. So the main, our result is that we have found actual structure in this S-box, which looks like this. So up to uh, linear layers applied before and after, this is equivalent to that APN permutation. So in this structure, A is any three-bit APN permutation, and alpha is a, so dot in a circle is a finite field multiplication by non-zero alpha, such that uh, trace of alpha is equal to zero. Yeah. So now I will show how we managed to find this decomposition. First, uh, recall the definition, uh, the notion of uh, S-box reverse engineering. So when uh, some cipher or some primitive designers, uh, they uh, publish uh, an S-box, they might not explain how they obtained it. Did they generate it by random, optimized it, or use some structure in order to have efficient software or hardware implementation? And reverse engineering, S-box means to find uh, some possible design criteria just from a lookup table. And possible targets for reverse engineering are, for example, S-box of Skipjack. Uh, this work were presented by my co-authors at previous crypto, uh, where they basically introduced the notion of S-box reverse engineering, and they showed that uh, the S-box of Skipjack could have been optimized for some linear resistance. Uh, at Eurocrypt this year, we presented uh, reverse engineering of S-box of Russian standard primitives, where we actually found some structure. And it turns out that we can use these uh, somewhat cryptanalytic methods uh, and apply them to, to this Dylan's APN permutation. It's interesting because the, the APN permutation is more like a mathematical object 
and we know how it was generated, but still we can apply this kind of cryptanalysis, and that's why we call this uh, cryptanalysis of a theorem. So to introduce the methods, uh, I recall definition of linear approximation table, or LAT, of a function. It's very similar to DDT, but instead of difference approximation, we use uh, linear approximation, so, which is defined by linear mask A and linear uh, input mask A and output mask B. And uh, the dot defines a scalar product. Okay, so one of the ideas from the previous crypto paper was to draw a so-called Jackson Pollock representation of the AT. Uh, that is, we just compute this table and assign colors to the values and draw the corresponding image. And then the idea is to look for patterns with your eyes. And here we can, so here is the such representation of the IT of the Dillon's experimentation, so the one which we want to decompose. And clearly there are some patterns, there are stripes, and on top there are no gray areas. And using the same methods as in previous papers, uh, we can actually apply, uh, so we can compose a linear mapping with S-box, such that the result in S-box uh, has this uh, representation of the IT. It's much more structured, and so there is some kind of square structure. But more importantly, uh, there is a white square in the top left corner. And this white square is an indicator of some multi-set properties, which can be, which is, as a result, we can obtain the following structure for the S-box. So for the S-box, which is consists of application linear layer and the Dillon's permutation. Here, uh, T and U are key permutations. That is, for example, for T, when the left branch is fixed, then it is a permutation on one branch. And when the key coming from left is different, the permutation is different each time. You can also think about them as uh, small uh, block ciphers. Uh, for example, here's table for T. Uh, the left branch selects the row and then each row defines a permutation. So uh, this white square uh, indicates some multi-set properties, and the multi-set property is that uh, if we fix the left branch and we put uh, all values on the right branch, then we will get all values on the right branch of the output. This is just exactly what this TU decomposition captures in the white square. Yeah, and we also notice that T and U in particular, in this case, uh, are related by linear mapping, so we need to decompose only T, and there we will, we will get immediately a decomposition of U. So here's a small overview how we can decompose T. Uh, first, we detach a linear fun uh, Pascal function such that T prime uh, maps zero to zero for all keys, so for all values coming from right. In particular, in this case, it turns out that T uh, is a linear permutation. It's uh, a good indicator that we are on the right way because, in general, this can be arbitrary function. Then we look at the univariate representation of T for all different keys, and we found that nonlinear part is key independent. So we can separate it into nonlinear part N and linear still key dependent part L. Then we can apply some linear permutation such that nonlinear part actually becomes the field inverse on three bits. And some few steps later, similar steps, we actually obtain the, the following decomposition. So the top uh, part corresponds to T and the bottom part corresponds to U and there is a linear layer among them, between them. And we remove the XOR constants, and it's still an APN permutation. And we also looked for a nice representation of the central linear layer. And as a result, we obtained the decomposition, the final decomposition that we, we have. In particular, it allows for a nice bit slice implementation. So if somebody wants to design uh, some lightweight cipher using this S-box, 
can be quite efficient. So uh, the next question is, the natural question is, uh, so we have this structure and we can simply change the branch size because it was 6 bit S-box and the branch size was 3 and now we can change it to some larger values and see what happens. And we call such uh, structure butterfly structure. It kind of looks like butterfly. And uh, so we call this open butterfly structure and we denote it by H. And additionally, we study this another structure which we call closed butterfly and we denote it by V. It is interesting from analysis perspective. Now we recall the definition of CCZ equivalence. Uh, two functions are CCZ equivalent if the graphs, the functional graphs, are related by an affine mapping. A good thing about CCZ equivalence is that it preserves the maximum coefficients in DDT and LAT. And it turns out that the open and closed butterflies are CCZ equivalent. So these two structures are CZ equivalent and th therefore they have same DDT and LAT uh, maximum coefficients. Okay. And uh, we managed to prove that uh, both open and closed butterflies, uh, the DDT coefficients are at most four. Experimentally we checked for small n and we did not find any new APN because uh, yeah, there were some fours always, but we don't know if for some larger n, maybe there will be some. The algebraic degree of closed butterflies two and of open butterflies n plus one, where n is the branch size. And experimentally, we, for small n, we found that the nonlinearity, which depends on the maximum LAT coefficient, uh, is the best known to be possible. So this for uh, butterflies. And this, uh, corresponds to a case when alpha is not equal to zero and one. And interesting things happen when we put alpha equal to one. The open butterfly actually becomes functionally equivalent to a three round Feistel network. And the closed butterfly becomes equivalent to this uh, Lemmis-like structure. They have some similar properties, but for this we can prove that they are not APN always they are just, uh, they contain only, the DTs contain only fours for any n. And the algebraic degree of closed butterfly is also two, and for open butterfly is n instead of n plus one uh, for the previous case. And another interesting property is that for some exponents e, for example e equal to five, the Closed butterfly, this structure, uh, is actually a fine equivalent to a monomial x to the power e in the, in the large field. And since these two structures are CZ equivalent, we deduce that the, this Feistel network, three round Feistel network, is CZ equivalent to a monomial. It's uh, quite interesting. Okay, and now some new properties of the APN permutation. So we, we go back to six bits. The, the structure that we have found. And we look uh, what we can change in this structure uh, so that it still remains an APN permutation. Uh, first, we can replace A by any small APN permutation. Uh, we can replace alpha by any field element with trace equal to zero and non-zero element. We can XOR values uh, here, 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 and here. Uh, like there was XOR with five in the original structure, we removed it, but we can put any XORs and it still remains an APN permutation. We can apply uh, linear functions here and here and here and here. And also we can add uh, branch swaps before the red uh, rectangle and after. Uh, the first four transformations, they preserve a fine equivalence that is applying these transformations is equivalent to applying some affine mappings before the structure and after the structure. But uh, the last transformation, adding swaps before and after, breaks affine equivalence. That is, we obtain four different affine equivalence classes of this APN permutation. But uh, the CCZ equivalence is still preserved. 
So it, from the point of view of CCZ equivalence, it's still the same as box as Dillon's permutation. Another interesting property is, uh, first we define a component-wise product. And then the property is that for closed butterflies, if you multiply both input branches by lambda, then it is equivalent to multiplying output branches by lambda to the power e. And for the open butterfly, if you multiply the input branches by lambda to the power e and lambda, it is equivalent to multiplying the output branches by the same values. Also, the closed butterfly is actually a fine equivalent to a concatenation of two band functions. Uh, actually, one band function and same band function with swapped parameters. Additionally, in the Dion's and others' paper, uh, they present a univariate representation of this APN permutation, where the composition of two functions, where each contains like 18 monomials. So it's quite complex. And using our decomposition, we managed to find much uh, smaller representation with only like four and six monomials. Or using composition of uh, three, three functions, even more compact representation. Uh, and a small remark about the key mapping. It is uh, an APN function uh, given by this polynomial. It's not a permutation, and it was already known before Dylan and others. And actually, uh, it was a starting point uh, from which the Dylan and others uh, obtained the APN permutation. So key mapping is APN, but not a permutation. And using some code theory and algorithmic search, they managed to transform it into a permutation, into a APN permutation. And our structures, uh, our decompositions are related like this. So as shown before, the open butterfly is corresponds to the APN permutation, a affine equivalent. And actually, the closed butterfly is affine equivalent to the key mapping. So in some sense, we can reinterpret this uh, transformation that Dylan and others did as, as opening the closed butterfly. So conclusions. Uh, there is a decomposition of the only known APN permutation in even dimension. But we did not find any new APN permutations in even dimension. And there are these two open problems. Uh, to prove the experimental result about nonlinearity and to see whether there are actually APN permutations, uh, sorry, APN butterflies for larger n. But actually, there is a group which has, I think, has answered these questions. So, to the first question, there is a, a positive answer. So, it's the butterflies always have uh, the best. Put known to be possible nonlinearity. And for the second question, the answer is negative. Uh, the butterflies are actually never IPN except this six bit uh, permutation. And so the, the only, the main open qu question is uh, whether there still exist uh, IPN permutations in even dimension other than this Dillon permutation. Thank you.